the whole market segment. Mm -hmm. Like all of the market is on Instagram to where Facebook tends to be a little bit older, but then you've got TikTok and all of that, which is just the kids and don't worry about them. That's, <laughs> but so that not only is it the easiest to use, but it is now recognized as being a, a legitimate online portfolio to where if you want to use that as your website, like your dedicated website, that's absolutely accepted in pretty much all the art circles is your Instagram handle. So you don't have to have an actual website unless you want to have something more detailed, more dedicated that has a full artist bio and all of that. But that Instagram is, that's going to be your easiest go-to. And so um, a few of you raised your hands that you had that. Is there, has anyone who doesn't have that? Have you played around with it or looked into it at all? Is everyone pretty familiar with that? Uh, yeah, we, I'm we not have... really. <laughs> okay, well, I, I have it. I I can access it, but I haven't used it. Yeah. It, it and you can't. And the nice thing about it is you you can't mess it up. Like if you're building your own website or like some of these other platforms, they can be a little confusing or a little overwhelming. It's Instagram is so e like you you can't you can't make a mess and so that's that that's I would use that as you go to when you start getting your work out there and start promoting it and so what what are some of the goals that all of y'all are looking to do are you wanting to just kind of get your work out and seen are you wanting to sell products um, like what's some of the What's some of the goals that, because there's so many different directions you can take it and it can get a little overwhelming. And I want to keep this as like, as unintimidating as possible. So what are, what are some things that you are wanting to do? I would love to have more people see my work. And if I could make some money on selling uh, cards or I, I'm a commercial photographer and I'm not doing much but just having fun with it now I'm, I'm retired so um i think that would be really great to have some photos in a gallery or something like that okay fantastic um what are some other goals that people are looking to do with it pictures on calendar okay that's a good one and um so if you're wanting to have your work put onto items and to sell there there's a lot of different there's two two main ways to do it. You can either have items printed and sell them yourself, which you do the packaging and shipping and all of that. Or there are sites called print on demand sites or POD sites that um, they've, they've really popped up in the past five years and they've gotten really fantastic. And they're a great tool to where you basically just whatever images you have, you upload them to the site, pick which product you want them on, and then the company will create the product, ship it for you, do all of it, and then you just get a percentage of that sale, which you get less money with that than if you made it yourself in shipping. But I've had a web store since... 2002 and i could tell you right now if you can get the shipping and customer service and all of that out of your life it's it's worth it's worth the cut in sales because it it, it it's 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 such a headache like anytime you're working with it's just a headache so to have a company that that has that will do all of that hard work for you and then you just take like and you just kind of take a percentage of that, I mean, that's just money in the bank to where you kind of front load the labor and then you just sit back and take the money. So that it's pretty nice. Um, I created a little um, a printout, like a PDF printout, um, and I emailed it to Linda and I'm going to have her distribute it to y'all after this. And it's got I made um, just it's kind of like a cheat sheet on the main topics of online portfolios, marketing and social media, um, as well as e-commerce, which print on demand versus having physical, your own physical products, um, as well as then getting into galleries. And so like anything I talk about here, you're gonna get 
a little, you know, a cheat sheet of everything I say. So you don't have to worry about, cause this is going to be kind of an info dump and I don't want for it to be like overwhelming. Um, so it's all, it's all going to be, you're going to have access to all of the sites that I mentioned and, um, tips and tricks that I say that, you know, talk about, you'll, she'll get that to you as soon as this is done. But, um, there, there's a whole bunch of different sites that do print on demand. And, um, in the, in the little printout that Lynn is going to send after this, it, I list a bunch of them and the pros and cons of each. Some are more geared towards, um, prints and like art prints. Some are more geared towards apparel. Some are more ge like it. And the one, one of the trickiest things about these is when some, when another company has control of your product, when they are making it and sending it out, you have less control of the quality. You don't really know unless you get a sample of that, what that quality is. And you want to make sure that like nice stuff is going out to people. So depending on like which of which company you go with, um, I always get a sample printed up and I'll pay for a sample and have them send it to me so I can see exactly what the customer is going to get. And that way I'm more comfortable because so it, it really varies a lot. Like there's one site called Society6 that it is all art driven. They are very like their art prints and all of that are fantastic quality, um, but they don't have as much as far as um, as far as like home goods. If you want stuff on coffee mugs or calendars or things like that, they don't have as much, but their art prints are really beautiful. And so if you're wanting to do prints, I would go with them. If you're wanting to do more home goods, then there's um, like Redbubble and Printify and they do that. And so, and it, the quality is going to vary. So I say before you like, you pick out your products, you create your products on their site and you'll have like a little, they'll, you know, you'll build like a storefront on there that you can like, that's the link that you'll send customers to. Like you can have it if you have business cards or on your social media, you can put the the link to that on there or in your emails or whatever that's your link to your store and so you will create like a little store and it's very easy to do i promise you this stuff is very user friendly it'll walk you through step by step um and when you create your little storefront you just have your images uploaded and you can pick which products you want them put on and it'll just kind of build build it for you and you then you can like get samples made and kind of buy samples and so you can see what that quality is and then you can go live and boom you've got a web store like and it's very it's it sounds like a lot but once you get in there i promise if if you're able to if you're able to make digital photos ha and like get on zoom calls and send photos and whatever you can do these sites it is and especially if you if you've been on facebook if you've been on instagram if you've been on any of that then you can build these sites. It is very just like, just upload, drag and drop, very simple. And so that um, that's something that I would, if you want like the easiest way to do it is go through the print on demand. Cause I mean, there are other options like having Etsy stores and things like that, but then you're putting yourself basically in a customer service position. And the, I don't, Unless you, unless you have to be in customer service, I don't, I wouldn't do it voluntarily. It's not, it's not fun. So I think things like this might, I think you'd have a lot more enjoyment out of that because it's a way to get your art out without it being stressful. And there's no, you're not having to buy a lot of product up front than have it just sitting, you know, it's, it's, you don't have inventory. You're not having to worry about any of that. It's, just very, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty low maintenance. So that's always nice. Um, another, someone had mentioned, um, getting your work out and for like gallery work and things like that. One thing that's really cool about your group is you are, you have kind of like a ready built collective right here to where if you all want, I'm very collective minded, like just in the past couple decades of exhibiting, the way that I have grown is by working closely with other artists and all of us growing together. Like 
we, uh, me and all of my our friends, we all work in very different genres and we all have very different contacts. And so if I hear about a show or get contacted about a show and it's not going to really work for me, but it'll work for these other friends who, and then I push the show to them. Like we all like push shows to, to each other and we come up together or we've all come together and shown together. Like if we're like, we're all open in October. Let's put together a group show. We'll find a space and put on a show ourselves or contact a gallery. You you all have that just within this circle. Like you're, I'm, I'm sure that like all of you could be standing in front of the same meadow and I'll take a photo and they would all look completely different because of each one of yours different aesthetic and way that you work and the way you do lighting and all of that. And that's what makes groups like this so amazing because a lot of galleries like if they've got a ready built group of people then that's that much less work for them and they're more open to like they love group shows and they'll like they will be a lot more welcoming to where it's like we're you know we're we're this collective of photographers that we would love to have work in in your space, which that I would utilize that as much as you can, because that's really that's that's the, galleries and spaces are going to love that. But if you're starting to look towards spaces to show in, start small, look around at local restaurants, coffee shops, libraries usually have gallery space in them and they're fantastic. Um, any place that you go into that has bare walls, talk to the people that work there and be like, what would you think about having, you know, would you be open to like having some artwork on your walls? I'll give you 20% of the profits, whatever you sell, I'll give you 20% of it. It's, that's a really good way to not only get used to exhibiting, <clears throat> excuse me, but to um, start to get used to just that putting yourself out there make because you're because you have to be your biggest advocate for your work you kind of have to not be afraid of being like I do this and it's awesome of course you want it on your walls what's wrong with you like you know and really like being comfortable in your own artist voice and what you do and so just kind of having like having those conversations with spaces and seeing what's out there, that's going to build your confidence. But then also those, those little spaces turn into bigger spaces. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a catch in my throat. Okay. The more you, the more you show and the more you kind of build a portfolio of exhibits, or the more attractive you are to more reputable galleries and more reputable spaces to where if, when you look at the art world, it is, it's a business just like any other business. Like a painting is really no different than a jar of peanut butter at Walmart because they're all a product that <clears throat> that's for sale to the market that will get a profit. And so it's not, <clears throat> one more time, hold on. Mm -hmm. Let me try and get past this. Let's see if that does it, okay. So when you go and talk to spaces that show artwork or that, um, that are artistic, artistic spaces, <clears throat> hmm. they're looking to make a profit so that they can keep their doors open. And so the more of a following you have, the more of um, experience you, you have showing, the more that you can show that you sell work, they're going to want to have you on, your, on their walls so that they can keep their doors open, which is why you get a social media following and why you have, you know, well, you start small and get that experience and start like getting to know getting to be known in your area that is is because it builds up that reputation that you sell and that starts to build to bigger galleries or bigger spaces and it just kind of like 
it snowballs in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I say like, start small and do a lot of little small things. And also go out to other, like really make it a habit to go to um, craft fairs, because that's a great place too, is doing like craft fairs and like farmer's markets that have like, most farmer's markets will have like local crafts and artists and things like that as well. Get a small booth and just kind of see how people receive your work and, you know, like print up some little postcards and just give them away for free. Just so, just to get people aware of what you do. Am I, I'm throwing a lot of information at you right now. Are there any questions? And don't, don't hesitate to interrupt me or ask questions because I could just keep going. So, <laughs> you're, you're uh, fine. you know, with the, everything you're saying is like, like points okay. well made. So just keep, keep going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And the one thing I would starting small with smaller places and craft fairs. I know that there is, there's a patchwork craft fair that is in, they have it in Santa Ana, Long Beach and LA. And that it is perfect like very geared towards like DIY artists like small like that that emerging artist that's what like but those kind of craft fairs they they go on especially in like Santa Ana and Long Beach all the time Long Beach is fantastic because it's so arts driven like there's always something going somewhere and just start getting on the lookout for that because the more you go to them, you'll see how other artists are setting up their booths, displaying their work. How are they framing things? How are they how are they putting themselves out to the public? And how is it being received? Like if you see one booth that's doing something really simply and it's getting swarmed, take note of that. And, sh you know, like, what do I like about that? And learn from other artists like they're successes and mistakes and then you can also start talking with them and building those relationships because the the more people you know in your local art community the more you build up that collective of people that you can all work together and help each other out mm -hmm. right, right. yes imagine long beach uh, what where is it in long beach and is there a particular name for it there's one that comes around. It's um, that is fantastic. It's called um, the Patchwork uh, Craft Fair, and it 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 comes around once a year, and it it starts in Santa Ana. It has one weekend in Santa Ana, one weekend in Long Beach, and one weekend in L.A. And it is when you go there, it's this the booths are all really cute like everything is like it's really well put together and it's a great example of a really wide variety of different ways that you can display your works and see your works but i would go to like as many different craft fairs i know the or the oc county fair has a bunch of craft fairs throughout the year like just kind of start keeping your eyes open for different things that are happening locally <clears throat> and it doesn't even have to be in your medium i mean if there's at like anything with sculpture or painting because you'll be able to see you know pick up little tricks and ideas from all different mediums of just how artists are putting themselves out there you like might like the way that this one artist does their business cards or the displays they put up or something it's all it's it's all learning from other people in your community of things that you could use as well. And so, I mean, and especially when you're just starting out and getting yourself out there, you wanna just take in all that information or you might see stuff that's like, oh my gosh, that looks awful. And no, you know, to never, never do that. Like it's all information is usable and good. So like, just start soaking it, soaking it up and seeing like what you think would work for you and what, you don't want to do it all like that's it's all good information let me ask you what what has been your experience on instagram I mean, how many pictures do you have out there and what kind of response do you get do you get people offering to buy some and like that yeah it's it is um what you put out and and here's the here's the maddening thing about social media is the more you work it 
the more it's going to give back to you. Like it's, it's kind of this thing that you have to really feed and babysit in order for <laughs> it to pick up and gain momentum um, to where I will post, I will post images. I should be doing it like at least four times a week, but like around three or four times a week is when I post like three or four days a week. I'll like, I'll post an image or something up there just to keep going. And one of the things that um, is going to really drive people to you is um, hashtags. Does anybody, are we aware of that term hashtags? Yeah, it is annoying. You have to feed the algorithm, which the algorithm is basically, it's, it's what is telling the program to bring people to you, to where if I go on Instagram and I'm looking at other painters and other, you know, and like specific types, like let's say I went in and I only looked at like people who paint flowers. That's all I look at is people who paint flowers. Well, through hashtags, I could search like floral painters, painters of Instagram, whatever, and it will pull up anybody who has those hashtags written in their post what and the little comment you know when you put up a put up an image and then you can write the text that you want it to go with that's where you put in your hashtags and then the little thing that i the print out that linda's going to distribute explains all of this in very simple terms so whenever you post you have to you know you put your little description and then you put the hashtags that's what's going to send people to you that have the similar interest to you because you have to kind of teach the computer who to bring to you so that you get a real organic following, like the people who start following okay. you really want to be there. And mm -hmm. that's that that's who you want. And it really can, like, that's how you build your audience. And that is, and you can, like, that will build up, like, who wants to buy your work, who wants to, that's how you let people know, I've got these images for sale, I've got this, yes, you can absolutely make sales from it. That's how, when you start, like, if you start putting your work out there at shows and whatnot, that's how you get the people to your shows. It's, it's how you build your client base and all of your potential buyers and your followers. It's, it's a very powerful tool if you use it correctly and it's not that hard it can just be tedious it's like god i've got to i got to post again it gets it can get monotonous and annoying but it's ex these tools it's really exciting cuz like i started exhibiting at my first gallery show in 2002 I believe it was. And that was just like, that was before social media. That was before any of this. It was just like the internet was just at that point getting into everybody's homes. And so I had like, I was right. One of the first artists in there with the website and the amount of work that we, that I had to do to get people to go to my site was like, I mean, you're talking like mailing postcards and all this really like heavy heavy handed footwork that you had to do to get people to know who you were. So once social media started that, like that just opened up all of it because you no longer had to, to fight so hard to be seen. And that's still true, but now you're having to fight a hundred million other artists out there who are all, we're all trying to be seen. Traffic's awful. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're all, yeah, so we're all like trying to be seen, which is why using things like hashtags, like it narrows it, it narrows it a little bit. Like the people who want to find you are going to find you quicker if you use these little, these little tricks and get the algorithm on your side. But it's, I mean, but yeah, it can be a, a very powerful tool, which is why like large companies dump so much money into it because it, it works, but you got, but you got to you got to invest the time in it what no uh, so so you get people coming to um, your instagram mm -hmm. and um uh so i'm not sure after they look at your pretty pictures on 
you know, that you're posting, how do you make money from that? Do you in your bio, you can have a link to either your website, your like web store, any, you know, if it's a print on demand, a little website, you will have that, like the link in your bio. Cause you know, when you go to Instagram, there'll be the little circle icon of the profile picture. And then there's a little description. Of yeah. You. That's where you put your link right in there and they can go straight there. Oh. And there, if you want it, and if you, if you, a lot of these, um, social media, I know Facebook and Instagram both do it to where you can set up like a professional site to, that is linked to your web store to where if you put a photo up that's like available for sale, it can directly link to that product to where it'll have like a little pop-up link like want to buy this and you can like it's and that's when, when you get into a little more comfortable with you know with using these social media tools you can like build those little links up in there to where it can link like from one photo directly to where those prints are available or what that that product that you want it's they really like it, it's a very commerce based like all social media is very commerce based now and so they want to help you sell stuff because they want you on the site. The more people are on their platform, the more they make money. So they want you on there and they want you selling. And so they, it's, yeah, they have some great tools to get all that rolling. It's just kind of, yeah. So I, I would, I yeah, use all of it as much as they're going to get, which much of those little opportunities they give you absolutely use every bit of it. I have a, on uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. For one thing, it's uh, much easier now that you can do it with your computer. Mm -hmm. It used to be just by phone. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've got about 1,400 pictures on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. and But the, the hashtags, I'm never sure what to put. And, and yep. uh, I don't know if I found the right combination. I've, uh, I've only got 381 followers. Mm -hmm. and. Um, so and I that's okay I'm that's that's a good number of followers like that i have in the in the printout that linda's going to send out i had i put like a good example of like what of hashtags because that is it is ever changing and it is confusing like what i had used as an example like let's say you're posting a landscape photo a good example you want to use around 10 no more than 10 or 15 hashtags like because you don't want to flood it but you would put in like hashtag veteran photography digital photography landscape california wildlife nature nature photography veteran art artists of instagram like that's like those are the ones that are in like the little printout but it's you want to keep it very um precise to who you are and what they're seeing, you know, to where if it's like animals, animals and art, you know, or if it like if like for when if you come out to EET and, and take photos of the horses, horses of Instagram, like ranch life, horse photography, animal <laughs> photography, like, you know, veteran photography, anything that that's going to limit, you know, kind of narrow down what people are looking for. But 300 followers, and here's one thing, there's something called vanity metrics to where when somebody has like 200,000 followers, but then when you go to look at their profile, each one of their picture, like there's no interaction, there's maybe like one comment or whatever, you can buy followers, but it's going to ruin your um, interaction. The 300 plus people that you have, those are people who have found you and genuinely want to be there and are genuinely interested in what you do. That's awesome. Those are people who will interact with what you're doing. You can buy a bunch of followers who are just bots or just fake accounts just so it looks like you have a lot of followers, but that's not, that's not gonna do anything for you. If you have a true number, whether it's like 30 or 300 or 3000, that true number that people found you organically, that's awesome. And 300 plus, that's great. Like that's like, like 
let the Kardashians have their million plus followers. We don't care about that. <laughs> like we're wanting people who really want to be there. And so that's a good number. Well, you're, you're right. Uh, of the 381, three are my only friends left in the world. <laughs> the rest are people that found me. Uh, I'm exaggerating, but uh, the majority is people that found me. And, and that's awesome. And I link to my, I have a, up there in my bio, a link to my web page. Mm -hmm. But uh, the question I'm coming to is I'll get comments some, some, from people I'm not even following, I guess, because of the, or not following me because of the hashtag, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll say, ask me to DM the photo to some sort of. Uh, Ignore those. It, yeah. It, I've, it, it, I've been ignoring them. Yes, so ignore those. It sounded like a scam to me. And that's when, and, and that's also one of the things, the more you put yourself out there, the more images you put out there, the more you're online interacting, the more shady people and scams and all of that you're going to run into. Oh. And that's just part of the internet. The beautiful internet is that it's just a full of a, a lot of, a lot of garbage. And so if, and that's like, and that's okay. Just ignore it and keep keep going. In that, but the fact that you have like those organic followers, you're in the right direction. And but those like DM and put your photo or post this pic on this account or whatever. Yeah, just ignore them. That's just yeah. They're just trying. They're using scammy tactics to get people to go to their site. Like they're feeding off of which actually that's kind of a good thing because you popped up, which means that. You popped up to them to see. So you are coming up to people outside of your normal reach. And so they're like trying to piggyback on your post to get them more views. So take it as a compliment and then ignore it. <laughs> Eve, I have a, a comment. Uh, don't you have a Smug Mug account? A, a what? I have Smug Mug and so does Amy. Oh, mm -hmm. are you familiar with Smug Mug, Kristen? Yes, yes, I've heard of it. I've never, I haven't been on there too much, but I, but I have heard of it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's got everything for the on demand. I don't have to do anything. Somebody wants to buy a picture, they yeah. select the whether it's on canvas or paper, what kind of mm -hmm. paper, how big it is, if it's framed or not, uh, if they want it on a mug or their underwear. It. They got all these choices. I love it. Those sites, I, I had just coming from, I had my, um, I had my own clothing company for a while before the 2008 crash, but I had like my own clothing company that was based on my artwork and just having to get products made and then have the inventory and then the shipping and then the customer service and all it is like, I've switched everything to these print on demand sites. They are they are amazing. They saved my sanity. It's like, I mean, I still have like an Etsy store, which that's a whole, if you want to know about like Etsy, I can tell you, but it's kind of its own beast that like, it's, it's a lot. Um, but it, uh, but like, I still have that just because, you know, I still have some product to ship and I'm so used to that. Like I've, I've got the shipping materials. Why not? But I'm slowly transitioning to just completely print on demand because it's just, it it frees up so much time and they handle if there is a customer service issue they handle it i don't have to do anything and that's that is wonderful so you're primarily a painter yes mm -hmm. painter and illustrator yep can you hold up a painting i don't have anything <laughs> i i can you make a painting can I make one real quick <laughs> <laughs> can we see you sell a painting <laughs> it's got i actually have um i have work available there's a gallery in long in long beach called dark art emporium and i've got some work available there but aside from that like i i create work specifically for shows and um then i never see the work again like it just sells at the show and that's when that's, you say that are you having to sit at the show I don't, I, well, with mine, I don't, I, the galleries that like, it's a little, it's a little different 
with each with each setting like with what the work that i do um i work with galleries the kind that are um they're open a few days a week and then they have like the big monthly exhibits and then you can kind of go in by appointment and like oh. look at yeah and like oh. look at the work and purchase um but and so no like i i just ship them the work and they put it up and they sell it and i don't see it again mm -hmm. um but there is but there are like if we were if i were to do like um craft fairs or smaller shows like that to where yeah you go and you sit at a booth throughout the day and sell the pieces and you know it's like for a weekend or a one day thing like that's it that's a different type of like craft like that's a craft show or a craft fair yeah but like if you wanted to have like like your own like a gallery show then you would you know you put your pieces up on the wall and then you just leave it there for a month or whatever time period is agreed on and then you go pick up whatever hasn't sold and get paid for whatever has we before the pandemic we would do two <coughs> shows a year that we put on with our work and we haven't done that since the pandemic but this group really cranks out a lot of good phot photography i love that so That's... we could, we can put on a really nice show and i i think we need to as a group won't tie you up with it but we need to have a discussion about that because before we were limited on what we could do by the VA, but mm -hmm. we're kind of in a, technically we're meeting or somehow we're currently meeting outside the VA with Zoom. And uh, I don't see anything wrong with us just on our own all agreeing, oh, let's go to, let's bring our work and show up at this place. So. I, I think it's, I mean, it's, it's really rare to have a group of this many artists working together and getting along. Like, so I would like, I would absolutely- We might not get along now. <laughs> <laughs> but like the fact that you already have this, this close knit group of people that works well together, you like, I like, this is a, this is a beautiful, rare little like, unicorn right here like that you I would lean into and really work Unicorns. with because, yes <laughs> exactly it's it it's it's really cool and so yeah like combine your powers and start like finding spaces you know that it's anywhere that's got bare walls you got it and house right now <laughs> Your house. There we go. That is have it part of the open house is have a little <laughs> it's it's buy some art. Yeah. Buy I some think, art or buy a house. Either one. Just uh, walk away with something purchased. I think we need to build on our group like veteran photographers without borders or something like that. <laughs> it's well, and the fact that you do have a collective theme. I mean, like you are a like you, you're all veteran photographers. That like you do you have like within this group you have something that defines what you are that is it that's a specialty market that people are going to really get behind and really be interested in and so absolutely i would like this is a beautiful opportunity just on like a, that alone on a marketing standpoint like create a little name for your collective and just start showing together or you could put you could put out your own calendar of your work like there's you know there's enough people here that you've got a calendar right there like that's there's a lot of different ways that you could take it with this group that could be really strong and really powerful and i there's a i know that there's like community centers and every like like there's a community center because i'm in huntington beach and our community center would absolutely put on a show of veteran photographers, I mean, you walk right in, boom, you're a show right there. That, that's it. Like the, every area has a community center, has a library, has, and then you start building that name recognition, get, getting people to come out. You start meeting a customer base and building on that, that buyer clientele. It's like, this, this is perfect. Like this group here is perfect to just hit the ground running with some really special stuff. The, the shows that we've done have been really successful in getting a bun of, bunch of people there, but we weren't allowed to sell. Oh, well, then that, the, well, then the next one's now, that you, the, the, now maybe you're going to change that more. 
if we don't connect it to the VA and we have it somewhere else, it's it's our own little photo club having us. Yeah, it's I. I mean, I just think it it can it can only succeed. Like everything about this is wow. fantastic. So yeah, I would I would lean very hard into that because you've got a really cool thing going right here that is rare to see in the art world. It really it's it's rare to see a very group but with a, but a dedicated thing that brought you all together in the art world that yeah i think we're you're unicorns. missing an opportunity she said so we're unicorns yes you're unicorns like just so go out and be magical like unicorns do that's that's and Anthony, you know like unicorn? <laughs> yes yes <laughs> so, so are you i take it you're volunteering to be our art director <laughs> if, anytime that and here and linda can give you um uh, my email address if you guys have questions more specific as to what like i i would love to help you out i'd love to give any advice that i can because like there there's entire like college semester courses just on like understanding social media understand like marketing is its own degree that you can get like these are big huge topics that can get very overwhelming especially when you're just starting in a field and with as fast as technology changes and moves right now it is it can be really it can be a lot and so if you if you have like other questions or other things that you want clarified like out like Linda, feel free to give them all my email address and I would love to help out in any way I can because it can be an intimidating world and it doesn't have to be and it shouldn't be because we make art because it's fun. And so don't let like the pressures of social media and the algorithms and the hashtags that don't let that ruin it for you like that should just be added bonus of fun like, but just like keep your eyes on the fact that this is like you're doing this because it feels good. And so the more you can get it out there, like you can help other people feel good, but don't lose sight of the fact that this is supposed to like be for you. And so anything else is just icing. I like icing. I, who doesn't like icing? Icing and unicorns. That's your new collective name. I just named you <laughs> icing and unicorns. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, you've given us a lot of information. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully it helps. Yeah, food food for thought. We've got some uh, discussing to do between the <laughs> uh, between us and see what we can do if we uh, if we can break away or not break away, but step outside the VA. That would be much more freeing for us. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to. I don't want to like a lot of good photographers in this group. Oh, amazing photographers. Yeah, the, I'm 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 blown away every week. We have a new assignment. We do we we still post on Facebook quite a bit. So we'll have a lecture and on something, and then uh, everybody goes out and tries to shoot toward that assignment for the week. And and God, they're just beautiful pictures. I love that. I love that. Yeah, right there. I just I see so much like potential with so this. Now that you've that... lectured to us, we'll allow you in because we keep our Facebook private because of copyright issues and sometimes we're you know we just keep it between us as a teaching tool that's and that's another thing with copyright it's a I that's a whole nother beast if you'd ever like any details because I currently there's there's a painting that I did for John Waters for an exhibit of his like years ago oh. it's now being uh, it's it's on t-shirts and sweatshirts being sold on Amazon out of China and I can't do anything about it like they've like I've had my artwork stolen it's on merchandise and being sold and there's nothing I can do about it because it's because China has different copyright laws than we do. And so that's a whole nother thing with like watermarks and making sure when you put things online, it's like a low resolution. So it can't be, it's that, if, if you would like more information about that, I've got, <laughs> it's, it's, it sucks, you yeah. know, like you have to protect yourself, but the only way that you can get out there is putting it out there, but that once it's out there, it can be stolen. It's, that's a whole nother beast, but. Who, yeah. who gave it? Who gave it to China? I mean, how did China? When they when they um, did the promotion for the show, 
that it was in, it was, um, the, the show was at the Minneapolis Museum of Art and um, of Modern Art and their show catalogs went online high res. And so they were able to steal the image high res, like print resolution um, from that. And then it's, um, yeah, it, you can buy it on Amazon on a sweatshirt, not for me, but it's, yeah. So that I absolutely understand keeping things private wow. and like protecting it, but there's also ways around it to where you can put like watermarks, like digital watermarks on things. And that way it's, you know, like there's, there's ways to kind of protect yourself, but that's also like, yeah, that that's a reality of the internet as well. That sucks. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the PDF. You've given us a ton of information to think about and uh, really appreciate it. And I look forward to photographing the horses. Yeah, yeah. I and think that, that would so be fun. Vocal. Um, maybe when we have a group, we get together at the library in Long Beach, we could have you come in and we could have a group discussion on something like watermarks and and uh stories of like you just said it's real it's real i've got one portrait that i did of an artist and that family ripped me off you know they they gave it uh it they put it in a videotape when the artist died and she's um does wearable art. her name's marjorie schick and um and now the videotape has gone about her life uh to the smithsonian and i'm still fighting to get my on that portrait and that's if you want to get into that when you start dealing with people with commissions with galleries you got to have a contract and like they'll give you a contract to sign you have to give them one to sign of yours as well and if they won't sign it sorry won't work with you okay. don't care what the opportunity is i won't work with you it's like there is like this go however deep you want to go i i i'm would love to share that information because it's interesting. anything to keep you from getting burned yeah that's because it's art is such a personal thing and it's such an important thing that people do to stay happy to stay mentally healthy to express themselves and it's it it's it's terrible when it gets diminished by scammy people or yeah. getting stolen or that like it really it hurts the experience and so the yeah. more you can like safeguard your artistic experience so that you don't get wounded by scammy people the better and so but it's yeah, it's things like contract stuff. So did you address that the Minneapolis people that put the catalog out with high res images, do they know that you've been ripped off and not to do that? I mean, sometimes it's, it's just. Yeah, they, they know now. And it's uh, but it's it's been like this happened like a few years after that show was when someone told me I'd like one of um. I have uh, like one of my little art fans was like, I just saw your stuff. It's on Amazon. I'm like, excuse me, what? What's on <laughs> and I looked it up and I would get one, one, one like item shut down and then another one would pop up. And huh. it was just like playing whack-a-mole with, and I just gave up. I'm like, I can't, I can't spend all my time yeah. fighting this. So have fun with yeah. it. It's yeah, but they know now not to, not <laughs> to do that, but yeah. 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 Wow. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to that PDF as well. Uh, Linda, you're going to send that out to, to us? Yes. I, I, I can send it out to you right after this. So. Great. Great. Very nice. Well, thank you so much for 